GM meetings are in full swing, and we're starting to hear some reports that maybe the Cubs are willing to trade some of their top prospects. Owen Casey, James Triantos, maybe Matt Shaw. We'll talk about that and also how important it is to Jed Hoyer to add pitching depth to this Cubs roster. And really, they don't have room to do much else, you wouldn't think, with all of the position players pretty much signed at least the starters anyway. We'll get into that and more right here on the Cubs Baseball Channel. Thanks for hanging out with us, guys. Let's get this show started. Mick Gillespie here, Cubs Baseball Channel. Great to have you on with us today. Uh, at Broadcaster Mick on the socials. And again, appreciate all of you guys for uh, being here to talk a little bit of Cubs baseball in this offseason as things start to, I feel like, get really interesting. I think it's that time of year where you start to look and go, hey, man, you know, where are these guys going to go and what's going to happen? Now, the GM meetings are taking place. That's where all of the executives go and talk. And, you know, baseball tells you new rules. And, you know, and GMs talk about what they're going to do with their teams. Maybe they're going to make some deals. And that's certainly what the Cubs are hoping to do, right? Jed Hoyer ha talked a little bit to the media. One of the things that he said was adding pitching depth is really important to us. Well, it doesn't take Albert Einstein to realize that the Cubs need some pitching depth. Now, he did say, Hoyer, that the reason why or one of the reasons why the Cubs really kind of fell short in the pitching department last year was that they were hoping to get more out of some of their young pitchers. Jordan Wicks, who spent the majority of the season injured, Hayden Wisniewski, who was kind of back and forth. Uh, Cade Horton, who we thought was going to be a uh, big time talent and never made it up there. Uh, obviously Ben Brown, who, who hurt his neck and was out. And then Justin Steele was out. So they dealt with some injuries last year and trying to kind of bounce back from that. The Cubs are certainly looking for uh, the next piece or some new pieces to this, uh, this team. Now, the thing to me is, and, and I was kind of wondering what they meant by, you know, working the margins. And apparently working the margins means that they're not going after the, the, the cream of the crop pitching talent. And, you know, that's, I, I guess, a little bit of a disappointment just because, like I said before, I mean, I feel like right now, if I was the Cubs, I, I would probably do the opposite of that. I would probably go all in. And I know dealing with, you know, obviously a, a, ge a general manager, a team president that are signed to one-year deals, or at least Jed Hoyer is. I'm not sure what um, Carter Hawkins' deal is. But anyway, you know, you, you're kind of, as an ownership management, you're thinking, you know, you know how much of a leash are you going give, to give the people that are managing your team knowing that there's a chance that they're not going to be back the next year? So maybe – and honestly, the, the, the you know, rumors that we're hearing about a potential trade of James Triantos or Matt Shaw have linked the Cubs and the Seattle Mariners, uh, you know, and, and, and it's because Seattle has a lot of pitching, but they haven't really been able to produce enough runs. And you look at some of the young arms that they have, you recognize some of these names, Logan Gilbert, George Kirby, Bryce Miller. Brandon Wu, I mean, you got, you know, starters there, guys that are quality. And, you know, you wonder, would you really be willing to trade a Matt Shaw for a top-end starter or at least a deal? I mean, I mean, you wouldn't get it straight up, but, you know, could you possibly make a deal to get one of these guys and slot in there with pitching like Shota Imanaga, Justin Steele, you know, uh, Jamison Tyone, I mean, these are the the pitchers that you know you're going to have back. You know, could you go and is that working the margins, trading some of the top 100 prospects that you have? And would the Mariners be willing to do that? Now, you would figure Nico Horner would be someone 
that a lot of teams would be interested in. But now that he's had the surgery, I'm sure the teams are probably going to back off a little bit and say, hey, uh, you know what? We're not willing to do that. Now, the problem with giving up someone like Matt Shaw, you know, obviously he's had a lot of success in the minor leagues in a short amount of time. He hits for power, which which has also been uh, kind of, to me, surprising for his size. But he's got a really strong uh, bat for a guy that's like around five foot ten, and um, he gets everything into the ball when he swings. And he's just one of those players that surprises you. But he's got great plate discipline, and I think that is going to play at the major league level. Defensively, he's good enough to get by. He's actually, to me, better at shortstop than he is at second base, which is which is kind of weird. But uh, because I think most teams have him slotted as a second baseman, and you know, I've seen him play some third, but the bat. And the power and the, the the walks and the on base percentage really fit a lot of the analytics that uh, you know teams right now are looking at and and looking for when they're considering to make deals. Now, you know, kind of getting back to the free agent game, um, the Cubs are kind of, according to reports, looking at the mid mid range starters. You know, guys like Sean Manaya and Nathan Eovaldi and. You know, Nick Martinez and 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 those kind of guys, uh, whereas maybe they're not going to be able to work out a deal for a Max Freed or uh, Corbin Burns, who a lot of us were really hoping that the Cubs would go after. And would Blake Snell even make sense? Another left-handed starter in this rotation, Jack Flaherty, saw him have a, a tremendous finish to the season. Uh, he's another free agent, but maybe not realistic for the Cubs. And it doesn't look like right now, or at least indicators are, that the organization is willing to spend on a, you know, a very expensive starter. The Cubs have, though, been linked to uh, curiosity when it comes to some of the players out of Japan. We've seen them do that. Those guys have lived up to it. I mean, look, I know Seiya Suzuki isn't the best defender in the world but all in all he's been a pretty good pickup I mean his bat's good and he's when he's healthy and we've seen him really play as one of baseball's best when he's been uh really healthy you know maybe his future is going to be DH just because the Cubs have a backload of 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 signed outfielders right and to me, and it always goes back to why would you give Ian Happ this long-term no-trade deal, and then you got Cody Bellinger coming back now, and you you've got Say Suzuki signed, and then you got Pete Crow Armstrong, who I think is the best defensive player or will be the best defensive outfielder in baseball. What about Mike Tockman? What about Owen Casey? I'm reading reports that maybe the Blue Jays are really interested in Owen Casey, and that wouldn't surprise me at all. Look. I don't want the Cubs to trade Owen Casey. I think it would be a potentially devastating move unless you get something back. And I'm talking about something really good back because you're giving up something really good. And if you trade him to Toronto, maybe there's a little extra incentive because he's not only a great baseball prospect, but he's from Canada and he's a guy that spends a lot of time in Canada promoting the game of baseball he would be a great fit for them and it, it could be like a Cal Ripken Jr. playing for Baltimore his hometown team where his dad worked you know so if you could get Vlad Guerrero Jr. we've talked about the impact that he has Dante Buchette's another player that is someone that people think you know maybe getting that junior like Cal Jr. Um, could help the roster he plays shortstop but Dansby Swanson is not performing at the level of a star player. So, you know, maybe, I mean, I, I, I can't imagine a scenario where Dansby wouldn't be the starting shortstop, but maybe, you know, you, maybe you set plays third. I don't know, but those are two names that you would think of with Toronto where they're willing to maybe wheel and deal they're rebuilding. And then they say, Hey, this is the kind of guy that we want where our fans are going to be really excited about having him on the roster. So uh, I, th I thought that was interesting. I wouldn't want to give him up, but maybe if you got back, uh, you know, some talent in return, some major talent, it would be worth it. But, you know, you get those guys, you know, how long are they signed for? Or could you make a trade and sign in a, a deal? You know, and some teams have done that before. Um, you know, 
that's kind of where I'm looking at right now with, with this Cubs team. But I thought the most interesting thing to me is just that I would figure that the Cubs big market team would play big market baseball, you know, and now you're hearing that the Dodgers may be going after Juan Soto and the Cubs are saying, well, we're going to stick around the margins. And that to me is a mistake. And I think it's a mistake just because you look at where baseball is right now. You look at where the White Sox are. I get it. Things are expensive. You just pe- spent a bunch of money on rebuilding the stadium, you know, or at least, you know, the infrastructure of the stadium and, you know, and all the other stuff that you're involved in. Maybe you don't feel like you're comfortable going out and giving that kind of contract and taking a risk that you're going to pay somebody and they're going to get hurt. But at the same time, I'm telling you that the Cubs with a couple of big time players mixed with the guys that they have, they got the great background band. They got an incredible background band. They got the East street band. Let's go out and get Bruce and let's go and rock this thing. That's how I feel about it right now. And it doesn't seem like it's going to be that way. So very interesting. We'll keep an eye on all of this stuff as it moves forward. Guys, you get in the comment section and uh, love to hear from all of you guys and talk baseball as we normally do. But like and subscribe, thumbs up, get in there, and we will talk to you soon. And also hit the bell. So, you know, you know, we jump on and do live shows when something important happens. I love to get with you guys right at that moment. But uh, go Cubs, and I will talk to you guys again soon.